Happy Tuesday, April 26th, 2022. The big news everybody's talking about, well, at least everybody on Twitter is talking about it, is Elon Musk is buying Twitter for $44 billion, taking it private. He'll be the owner. You know, in a reverse of what usually happens, well, first of all, people are ticked off. There's, there are people who, free speech is going to get shut down. I can't believe this. I saw an MSNBC host talking about, you know, how dangerous of a precedent this is. He could control the narrative and silence opposition voices and play an impact in, in political elections. That's our job. You can't do that, Elon. The audacity, I guess that's a thing. It's so transparent, so easy to see through these people at this point. You rigged an election, you stole an election, pretty obvious. And then there's, you know, you look at what happened in France, uh, some of the numbers just don't add up with what just happened with Macron. Not a very popular guy at all. A lot of protests occurred when he was selected again for the president of France. I don't know what it's called. It's called president. I don't think it's a prime minister. Or, uh, I don't know. I don't know what it is. It doesn't matter. The, the World Economic Forum figurehead in France. You know, so you've got these media outlets getting all upset that I can't believe we're actually going to have someone that's going to allow free speech. And Brian Stelter, little George Costanza on CNN talking about, well, you know, if you go to a party, who wants to go to a party where there's just no rules and it's just unregulated and you just, it's completely free and what's going, you don't know what's going to happen. Obviously you didn't go to college, Brian. I mean, when you go to a party, that's why it's called a party, because it's kind of out of control a little bit. You know, you don't know what's going to happen, and that's why you go. I saw one video where there's a big party at Grandma and Grandpa's house, and there's so many people, the floor collapsed while Grandpa was sleeping in the bedroom. But that's why you go to a party, for that excitement, for that risk, that danger of, well, you really don't know what's going to happen. Who's going to pass out? Who's going to throw up? Well, it's going to get broken. I mean... Isn't that why we went? So it's just, free speech is dangerous. We've got to control it. We cannot have someone, and I don't even know Elon Musk if he's conservative, you know, liberal, whatever label you want to put on him, it doesn't matter. If he's about free speech, I'm pro Elon Musk. That's the way I look at it. You know, there should be a platform where you can have free speech where you can engage in a conversation or not engage in a conversation. That's the beautiful beautiful thing about Twitter. You don't have to listen to somebody. You can mute them. You can block them. You know, you can get in your own echo chamber if you want to. I mean, what's... I just don't understand it, you know, why people get upset. And I, well, I think I do understand it, is because the media has been so used to controlling the narrative so used to being able to steer us with their their mockingbird crap that it's a threat now and the beautiful thing about this is you know you've got Elon in there oh, and then I see Elizabeth Warren I'm gonna get back to the beautiful thing the beautiful mind I'm gonna get back to that but you've got Elizabeth Warren and other idiots basically I mean they know what they're doing they're useful idiots You've got them coming out and saying, well, this is why we need a billionaire tax. We can't have someone having this much control. Again, that's our job to control everything. You know, we need the purse string so we can control things and we can spin it how we want. And it's it's us, not anyone else. And so these politicians, I mean, they're so thirsty with power and then they can control their opposition. And I mean, God forbid somebody use the system. Watch out for this kitty cat. Don't run out in front of me. Oh man, it's like in standing water. The cat's gonna be a stinky mess. But you've got Elon Musk who has basically used the system. You know, he bought or he founded PayPal, I think, with Peter Thiel, and then sold it to eBay for $1.5 billion back, you know, several years ago. And then he invested it all in Tesla and SpaceX. And there were times where it didn't look like that place was gonna make it. 
you know, and he's, you know, supposedly sleeping on the assembly line floors and rallying his people and, you know, hey, we're going to make it. I'm putting every dime I have in this and, you know, I'm in it for the long haul. And now he's worth, I don't know, 300 billion. I have no idea what it is. Some, some outrageous amount of money that he's worth now. Mailman. It's a mailman. Or as it would have been a male lady. So he's worth all this money. And he makes it in this system to where more money is generated, 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 and produced. And, you know, this fiat system, by decree, out of nothing, where he's made a lot of money in that system. And now he's using that money to take over these three-letter funded agencies, you know, that wanted to control and track and trace us. So he's going to buy one of them now with the money that that same vampire apparatus created and then make it a free speech platform. I think it's kind of funny. It's kind of ironic. And that's the key. When you become wealthy in this corrupt system, do something good with it. Take over something and make it useful. I, I just, kudos to him. And for people who say, oh, it's horrible, absolutely terrible, you know, I can't believe, you know, this, this right winger, this conservative, whatever, free speecher is going to allow people to, to spill their hatred and vitriol and toxicity all over Twitter. It's like, that's all Twitter is. So why not allow everyone to do it? And again, you have a block and a mute option. So I don't know. I think it's a good thing. And we'll see how it turns out. But a lot of people are having meltdowns right now. It's like, it does, whatever. You know, how does it change your life? I mean, how does it really affect you? I don't know. It's clown world. That's where we're at. Absolute clown world. Speaking of which, I see that there are some, in the cryptocurrency world, there are some people having the, the argument again, some high-profile people talking about Bitcoin and Litecoin being a, a crap coin, no use case, no utility, even though transactions continue to go up, more wallets are being opened than ever before. Um, just unbelievable. You have an actual coin that you can use that is sound money, that has a scarce supply, 84 million, a fixed supply. There's the neighbor out there playing in the garage. Yeah, who knows what he's doing today? Digging some more. Digging. He's digging it. Doing a lot of digging. But you've got people coming out saying that Bitcoin is the only coin, and then they try and make it work. Hey, let's use liquid, let's use lightning, let's use all these things that make Bitcoin actually do something and useful because the transactions that Bitcoin can produce are very minimal. Um, it's not going to be used for everyday transactions. It can't be. The blockchain will not sustain it. Even the Litecoin blockchain will not sustain uh, or allow for the ability to create or, or handle all the transactions in the world. It's not going to become the next Visa or MasterCard. And that's okay. That's not, that's not what it's for. Now you can go to a second layer, a lightning network, and, and do those kinds of things. But, you know, I've heard this lightning network stuff for, for ages now, years. How it's going to finally, you know, see, it's going to handle the world's transactions, this and that. But the thing is, you know, with lightning, it's, it's not written on the blockchain. You know, it's not peer-to-peer -peer transactions to where, you know, between me and you, I can send you value. I mean, it is and it isn't. But you've got gatekeepers and watchtowers out there and all of these different things um, where you'll have um, big entities running nodes, getting money on the transactions. And it's just, uh, it's not cryptocurrency in the purest sense. So to think it's going to do all these things, it's just, I mean, there's a place for everything. And Bitcoin's not that transactional coin. It's just not. It's become a store of value. And for people who say, oh, it can do all this stuff. It'll always, you know, it can, you don't need any other coin. It's absolutely ridiculous. Just like drinking, you know, one kind of beer. Why would you just want one kind of beer? You know, one kind of beer is going to do everything. Oh, it's going to give you the best flavor. going to give this and that. And, you know, it's going to get you as drunk as you want to be, but not in hangover. And I mean, you know, it's going to do all these great things. It's like, it, maybe people don't want that. Maybe people want to have a hangover so they don't drink it again. You know, maybe maybe they want something that tastes awful. You know, everybody's got their own taste. 
you know, cigars, you know, I've, I've tried a lot of cigars and some people will say, oh, it's got this chocolatey flavor, you know, followed by, you know, some nutty and bread. And, you know, they got all these flavors that they describe. And some of them, oh, it's rated really high and I'll try it. And I'll be like, I don't like it. It's just not for me. I have a different palate. You know, we all have different tastes for things. I don't have a taste for Bitcoin because of a lot of the people who are behind it and the entities and the money, the old system that's behind it. I'm just, I don't, I'm done with it. I'm just done with it because I've, I've seen enough and it's just, I don't like how people involved in it, big players are trying to deceive the public, new people who come into it and say, this is the only way. Everything else is garbage. It's absolutely ridiculous. You know, it's like a, a there used to be a whiskey monopoly, you know, whiskey trust in Peoria, Illinois, to where Peoria was the, known as whiskey town from like late 80s, 1880s to early 1900, not at 1900s, 1894, I think, in 95. At one point, Peoria produced, this is just Peoria distilleries, 40% of all the nation's alcohol, spirits, let's call it, 40% of all the whiskey, all the distilled spirits, 40% of the nation and that's how much was coming out of this, this area here. And they had the Whiskey Trust, you know, which included, you know, Peoria and then all the other um, regional distilleries that they bought up. It produced collectively 75% of the nation's whiskey, distilled spirits. 75%, three quarters of the whole nation in this region. And it, it became, you know, it was a monopoly and it get broken up and, you know, that was kind of the demise of it. But what they would do, they'd go in and they'd, you know, if somebody started up, they'd try and buy them out, threaten them, you know, and do all these other things. And you see the same thing repeated in history when you have monopolies. They think they're going to bully you into thinking their way. The thing is, you've got independent thinkers. You have people who say, no, I'm not going to play that game. I don't want to be a part of this. You're not going to deceive me, convince me, threaten me into it. I see the same thing happening with Bitcoin, with the people involved in it. And it hits repeated and repeated and repeated throughout history. There are people who just have a vested interest in something. They put all their eggs in that basket, and to them, that's the only way. And they are going to try and get you into it and make you believe that that's the only way. But it doesn't work. I mean, just it's human nature. History proves to us that stuff doesn't work. You're, you just cannot have a stronghold on a particular item for too long before the people say enough is enough. The market decides. The market will decide, and we are the market. We are the people. Again, it's all about energy and what we put our energy into. When somebody's telling you to do something, like, eh, I think I can find a better way. I think I'll find a better way. And a lot of people who have come to Litecoin and... You need to go listen to Litecoin Underground, LTC Underground on Twitter, just for his podcast. And on Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. Central or Eastern Time, he has a spaces to where anybody can just join in and listen if you're on Twitter. You really need to listen to his stuff because he brings a lot of these discussions, um, you know, to that platform. But I think it came up yesterday. Somebody had mentioned that, you know, everybody comes to Litecoin just because they want to, and they support Litecoin because they try it out, they see how easy it works, they realize the network just works, Litecoin just works, and they stick with it. You know, we've all been in that situation with Bitcoin where it's like you send it and you're like waiting, 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 like crap, is this going to show up? Even if it's a little bit of money, it doesn't matter. Imagine sending a lot of money. Is this ever going to show up? And you get nervous. You start thinking, man, is this stuff going through? Well, you know, the blocks are full and you're just kind of waiting for that next train car. Oh, well, that's full. That's full. You got to pay to get ahead, you know, to pay a higher transaction fee. It's just not built for speed. The blocks come out every 10 minutes. It's not built for speed. It has its own purpose. And, you know, that's locking up your wealth and the store of value. You want to go buy a mansion or an island or a Lambo? Okay, Bitcoin's great for that. But as far as, as far as the, you know, a speed of the network and, you know, again, Litecoin will suffer from this at some point as, as more and more people adopt it. For right now, though, it's just, it's fast. Um, 
and it's got a long way to go. And with Mimblewimble activating, it, it actually adds space to the blockchain, active the Litecoin blockchain, more room. So, I mean, it's just, Litecoin's doing everything right to be sound money for the digital age. That's what it comes down to, and that's why I resonate with it, and that's why a lot of people, they come to Litecoin, they come to Litecoin, and they use it, and then they realize, okay, that was a good experience. It wasn't a problem. Didn't have a community bashing me and telling me I should do this or not do that. I actually had a supportive community, a community that's willing to help. Somebody that says, hey, let's download a wallet. Doesn't have to be just this wallet. It can be that wallet, that wallet, that wallet. Because every wallet supports Litecoin. So you have a choice. And so the experience is much better and people stick with it. And there's a lot of people who support Litecoin that have done it for years. Even when they bought it, you know, three times as much as what it is now in dollar terms, doesn't matter. There's something about it that draws people to it and holds them to it because it works. It's worked for over 10 years, 10 and a half years. It's been had a network that's never been interrupted. Always sends transactions and there's a finite supply. There's only four times as many as Bitcoin. 84 million Litecoin can ever exist. 21 Bitcoin can ever exist. And to me, I think that's a major threat to people holding Bitcoin. Because if you're holding a $40,000 coin, and then you've got this other one here that actually operates better than you do, and there's only four times as many, and the price is only 100 bucks. You definitely don't want anybody buying that whiskey. That's bad news. That could destroy the whole whiskey trust. I think that's a lot of the problem. It's just you've got vested interests in a particular coin, and they just are threatened by something that's better and don't want people to understand that it's a better Bitcoin. Litecoin is a better Bitcoin. It's just that simple. There's no denying that at this point. Mimble Wimble's activating. I mean, you're going to have privacy transactions. Bitcoin can't do that. How long before it adopts it? And that's the beautiful thing about it. The code is so similar that if Bitcoin does something, Litecoin can adopt it. If Litecoin does something, Bitcoin can adopt it. So to bash something that's so symbiotic is not a good thing. It's not a smart thing to do. Ah, unless you're so heavily invested in the one that you cannot have the other one understood for how, how efficient it is and how well it works. That's the only thing I can think of. It, uh, it goes back to that monopoly mentality. I think that's where you're at with uh, a lot of people in the Bitcoin space. And you know what? That's fine. Keep that price of Litecoin down. That allows people who understand what real value are to accumulate more of it at a lower cost. And when there's none left and you can't get it, who are you gonna ask to buy it? Who are you gonna go to? Well, I ain't gonna sell it. So there you go. A lot of people won't sell it because they realize what the real value is. And it's a lot more than it is now, a lot more. And if people actually make, you know, take the risk, invest in Litecoin, hold it, and it goes to its fair market value, say it goes 10 to one to Bitcoin. It goes 10 to one, becomes $4,000 overnight, where it probably should be, it should be. It does that. What are you gonna do with those gains? What are you gonna do with that money? Um, maybe buy Disney, maybe set them straight. Maybe do like Elon Musk did, you know, and, and start buying up these, uh, these bad actors and um, maybe changing the world, maybe turning the money around, using it for good, using it for truth, freedom. Just something to think about. So I don't want to harp on the Litecoin thing too much, but I did see a tweet um, by somebody t uh, yesterday, today, a miner who was talking about, hey, the exchanges are coming to me and other miners trying to get coins because they're running out of inventory. See, what they're doing is if you leave your coins on these exchanges, these big exchanges, they know that you're not taking them off and they've got the, the numbers, the algorithms. They realize, okay, you know, I'm going to have this much on there and they can lend that out and use that for other things and make money off of it. But if you withdraw it, and take it off the exchange, they don't have it anymore. 
And that looks like it is happening. People are taking their coins off the exchanges and putting them in their own possession, in their own wallets that they control. And that's causing a problem for the exchanges because they're like, wait a minute, we don't have the coins. We need to get more of them. Where do we get them? And they've been going to miners. I mean, that's that's what it looks like has been happening. That's a uh, that's an interesting thing. A little short squeeze, a pinch, you know, a run on the banks, let's call it. Because the banks don't hold your money. And if everybody wanted to go get their cash out of the bank, it's not there. Just so you know, it's not there. They don't have it. And they'll have to order it from the Federal Reserve and have it printed up. And then they're going to ask you, why do you need it? And you're going to have to fill out some paperwork. And, oh, you know, why do you want all this money? Well, I'm buying furniture. And the guy wants cash so I can get a better deal. Or I'm buying a used car, whatever. But they're going to want to write you a check, a cashier's check. And then that way they don't have to have the physical, quote, asset, which cash really isn't. But you, they don't have to produce that because they don't have it. It's the same thing with these crypto exchanges. They don't have the crypto. They just don't have it. And you're seeing evidence of that right now. So if you've got coins on any exchange, take them off. Get them off. Get them in your own possession. If you don't know how to do that, um, we've got a class. Litecoin Lisa has a class on her website, litecoinlisa.net. Uh, you can sign up for a class. I'll be teaching it, and she'll be with me helping teach it. Um, how to download a wallet, take possession of your money, put it in your, you know, and in that, you know. So I don't know when, I think it's this weekend. I don't know when the class is. It's an interactive class where you can ask any question you want. We'll walk you through it. Get your assets in your own possession. I mean, that is the key. So anyway, you can go to litecoinlisa.net for more information on that crypto class. Um there's we do that when we go on the road for road shows you know we'll set people up with wallets teach you how to download this stuff answer any questions uh the next happy hour road show speaking of happy hour this friday we should be back live happy hour 4 p.m central time <sighs> on litecoin lisa's channel also simulcast on this channel youtube but um the live chats on her channel you can always watch it on this you know for archive purposes you know it'll be here on my channel but uh, 4 p.m. Central Time, this Friday, happy hour. It's back, baby. And the next happy hour is, I'm trying to set something up in Peoria, Illinois, in June. I'd like to um, get it at some distillery. There's a couple of them, or at least a brewery in Peoria, and have a happy hour there. So I'm kind of trying to set that up. The first thing fell through. Kind of disappointing, but that's all right. Everything happens for a reason. So I'm looking at something there to where, um, you know, we can have a live happy hour show and get everybody together for a meetup. I mean, that's that's always, you know, cool. So I'm, I'm working on that for like mid-June, mid-ish mid June um, to try and set that up. So I'll let you know about that. That'll be on my website, clintwestwood.net. Details on that. Other than that, we're going to be in Fort Smith, Arkansas at the beginning of August. Um, we'll be setting up some more dates, you know, everything's just kind of a little haywire right now, but we'll have some dates to where you can actually come and, and meet us, you know, live happy hour show. It's always fun. I love it. So get your coins off the exchanges, learn how to do that. I mean, so important, so important to have your money. Again, if the banks close all that money in there, you can't access it. It's not... It doesn't matter how much is in there. If the bank's closed and you can't get it and the ATM's not spitting out cash, what are you going to do? I mean, use your debit card, you know, that's tied to your bank account. Hopefully that works. You just don't know. If you don't hold it, you don't own it is really what it comes down to. And, the, and the, what's happening right now around the world, it's just important to have it. Because you try and order stuff, you can't get it. There's a waiting, you know, there's wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. All the supply chain issues, you know, food food businesses or manufacturing plants getting blown up, airplanes flying into them. Oh, just coincidence. You know, it happened to lumber mills, what, last year, the year before. I mean, and now we're talking about China locking everything down, you know, oh, spiking, you know, the virus cases and the new variants and it's going to affect the supply chain. You know, I, I'm, I don't think they're going to let anything out of their country anymore. They're not going to produce anything for us. 
And, you know, I can't blame them, you know, because what are you going to do? You're just going to print more dollars to pay for it. That's all we did was export our inflation to China for decades. And now maybe they're just saying, F it. We're not going to send you anything. We'll lock everything down and keep it all here. I don't know. Doesn't matter. It's just going to get harder and harder to get things. So if you can get them now, get them. Might seem like it's expensive, but you know what? It's better to have it, not need it, and need it and not have it. So get it while you can. Uh, use those dollars for something of value while you still can, because you can be, you can have a million bucks, but if what you want's not available, it doesn't matter. That money's useless. You can't do anything with it. If you're starving to death and you nobody's got any food for sale, what are you gonna do? If you can, get some seeds now. Get some heirloom seeds. You know, pick up a few of them. Because the thing about that is, you know, you, you plant the plant. And take one radish. I mean, take a radish seed. A little tiny radish seed. A little tiny thing. Stick it in the ground and they grow pretty reliably. I mean, you just stick it in the ground, it'll grow. Let that thing keep growing, keep growing, keep growing. Be amazed how that one little seed, that rad, a little radish, it starts blossoming out, flowering out. They're pretty flowers too, little flowers. But then they become, they produce all these seed pods. I mean, thousand of them off of one seed. They got all these pods, you know, like three or four of them in each pod. And it just produces all these pods. You can save those pods, put them in a plastic bag, put them in a bag somewhere, save them for next year. They get all dried out, let them dry out. But then next year, you just pop the pods open, take the seeds out. They come out real easily. And you got a whole garden. You can plant as many radishes as you want. And that's the same with all any other plant. You get the heirloom seeds, grow your plant, let it go to seed, collect the seeds. Next year, you're set. You're absolutely set. So get your, you don't need a lot. You know, people are like, I'm going to buy this whole giant storage thing of seeds and get what you want, plant it, grow it, collect the seeds, and use them next year. And pretty soon you start becoming self-sufficient. You don't need anybody else. You can produce your own food. You can save a lot of money. Eat healthy. So, I mean, if you don't have it, get it. Crypto, get it into your own possession. Absolutely. Don't have it on an exchange. Don't have it on an exchange. Have it in your own possession. Learn how to do that. Take control of your wealth. Be your own bank. That's really what it comes down to. All right, I've rambled it a lot. Almost a half an hour now. Talking about Elon Musk and such. And I don't even know. Um, I had some notes. And then I just wanted to talk about some things. I don't know. Yeah, I was going to talk about Title 42 and the administration and that whole crap show down on the border. But essentially, we've got an administration that's in paralysis. Everything they do doesn't work. Um, I don't, I mean, you know, we're going to have a mask mandate, gets overruled. Well, we're going to fight it. And then you've got this border thing, you know, the states, it's like you're letting people in. And uh, the state, the, the court said, no, you can keep turning them away. You know, Title 42, look that up. States, you know, in the court ruled, nope, you can keep turning people away. And then the administration says, no, 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 we want to get rid of that and allow people to come in now. And COVID's over. You know, they use that excuse. COVID's over now. So we don't need these COVID protocols that were put in place. But yet they're suing. Or I shouldn't say they're suing, but they're they're fighting the case in the courts as far as masking people because COVID's still a threat. So it, they're just done in every single direction. And you're starting to see it. And uh, yeah, look at what happens, uh, what's happening to Disney. And look at the history of Disney. You know, they're no longer this... Uh, this Vatican city, you know, in Florida, they've lost all their sovereign rights, all of these, uh, you know, immunity things, you know, they had their own police force, they had all, they enforced everything, so, you know, if anything bad happened there, it's like being on a cruise ship in international waters, if anything bad happened there, they handled it, you know, they took care of it, and then that's just kind of the way it worked, and so now those privileges have been stripped from them by the state of Florida, and rightfully so. No entity should be above the law. Look into Disney if you want to have a little fun. Magic Kingdom. So a lot of things are changing. 
Very interesting times in which we find ourselves. A lot of things changing. I'm not surprised by anything at this point. Nothing. So prepare yourselves the best you can. If you've got the wherewithal, the means to get things you need, get them. Get them now. Have them in your possession. Don't depend on somebody else to store or custody anything for you. Now is the time to take possession of everything that you have, your wealth, everything, your health, your food, everything. That's it. That's where we're at. All right. I love you all. I do. I appreciate you watching, um, spending your mornings or afternoons or evenings or whenever you watch this. I appreciate that time. I appreciate that energy. Very important. Um, trust yourself. Always trust yourself. Go with your instincts. Go with your gut. You know your path better than anyone else. Trust it. All right. I love you all. Hope you have a wonderful day. Talk to you next time.